Welcome back to the channel, everybody. I'm Ham Radio Dude. Thanks for checking out the channel. If you've been here before, you probably know I sound a little different today and I look a little bit different, and that's because I'm not feeling too hot. Um, but with that, I do want to give you an overview of a radio that I haven't even played with before, and that's going to be the Redivis RT47V. Now, before I get started, I do want to mention that you may agree or disagree with certain things I say in this video, and that's completely fine. But I do encourage you before purchasing this radio to try to find other videos on this radio and get an idea of what other people are saying. And in that case, see what matches up and what doesn't and make your own opinions if you think that this radio is right for you. Uh, with that, we're going to get started with the nomenclature of the radio. We're going to hook it up to a computer. So let's go ahead and jump into things. Hey, real briefly, I just wanted to discuss, well, what is MERS? Why do I need a MERS radio? Um, and I pulled up the FCC website. I think it would be best for me just to read that. The multi-use radio service, or MERS channels, uses uh, the 151 to 154 megahertz spectrum range. The most common use of MERS channels is for short-distance, two-way radio communications, using small portable handheld radios that function similar to walkie-talkies. That's the best way to put it. These things are like walkie-talkies, so what can you do with it? Well, if you're at an event, you could use them to keep in contact. You know, cell phones don't always work at big concerts and big events, so maybe have a MERS radio on you. You could use them while camping so you can keep in contact with your son who went fishing at the fishing hole. Uh, and people could use them in the neighborhood to play cops and robbers. Yeah. Hopefully they're kids that are playing cops and robbers. But that's what MERS is. And just so you know that MERS does actually have some businesses still on it. So you might hear businesses on, for example, Channel 4 or 5 sometimes is used by Walmart in my area. I just tend to avoid Channel 4 and 5. Anyway, let's get going. These radios cost $34 on Amazon. I purchased two of them. And additionally, I purchased a programming cable that cost about $13, bringing the total for two radios and a programming cable up to $85 or so. Now, I will say that the programming cable is not required, but it is going to be very useful. And I'll show you why here in just a little bit. What do you get inside the box? So you have this MERS radio that you purchased. You don't know anything about. Well, here you go. The first thing you're going to get is this radio here. And as we look at the radio, it looks like it's well-built. You could tell that it's uh, IP67 rated. It does show that and advertise it in the manual as well as on Amazon. But we got our little orange washer here, or grommet, and just a couple other things. So let's take a look at the top here. On the top of the radio, you're going to see that you have uh, SMA female connector. This is where your antenna is going to go. And uh, obviously the radio does come with a antenna. So we're just going to go ahead and screw this in here. Screw is very easy. Now you don't want to over tighten this just nice and snug. Um, additionally, you have an indicator light. This indicator light will light up green if you're receiving a signal and red if you're transmitting. So you can keep an eye on that. Finally, you have your power button or your power knob, which also controls the volume. Speaking of the volume on the front of the radio, we have our speaker for audio out and we have a microphone below here for audio in. The speaker on this radio is a half a watt of power, and so it's not going to be the fullest, greatest sounding or loudest sounding radio in the world. Uh, just keep that in mind, but it does sound fine for MERS operations. Um, but what I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you how it sounds. And here you got to plug in the battery to do that. Now, the battery is an 1100 milliamp hour battery, and it is 3.7 volts as well as 4.07 watt hours. But keep in mind, the radio is only two watts or less. So here's what you're going to do. You're going to go ahead and plug in your battery by kind of putting this at an angle here. And then after you have it at an angle, make sure this clip is down. If it's not, you're going to not be able to put the battery in. You see that right there? So make sure that clip is down, put it at an angle, and then bring it down, hold down pressure right here, and then bring the clip up and it'll lock into place. Once you do that, we're now ready to operate. We have... We have this uh, radio here, we have the antenna on, we have the battery, which I charged earlier, it's on. If you wanted to put the belt clip in, all you would do is use the two screws that are provided with the radio and screw the belt clip right here. Now I want to turn on the radio. Turn on the radio, five. Turn on the radio, five. One, two, three, four, five. Now I'm changing the channels by these two channel indicators on the bottom. This is channel up, channel down, and this is to push to talk. So when you find a channel you want to talk on, you would hit this and talk to somebody or hold it down and talk to somebody. The radio doesn't sound bad. Let's talk about a couple other features of this radio that you could use without a programming cable. One of the first features I want to show you that you don't need the programming cable to activate is going to be the lock button. The channel down button that's on the side or the bottom button on the side here 
this is also a lock button. So right now five. we're on channel five. And if I hold this down, you'll hear an audible tone. That audible tone that you just heard locks the radio. Uh, I'm going to hold this down again here, and it unlocks it. One, two, one, five. Additionally, instead of hitting the channel down button, if you were to hit the channel up button, hold it down for a couple seconds, you're in basically a monitor mode. So if a station's a little bit further away than your squelch is set, you should be able to hold that down and see if maybe you could faintly hear that individual. Kind of a nice thing. There are a lot of other features that we could unlock in this radio, long as we get the programming cable. But before we do that, let's take a look at how this thing looks uh, on a frequency counter. Uh, we'll check out the SWR and uh, take a look. While testing the power output levels, uh, I do want to make a note that yes, I did test this on a different meter <laughs> and not just the Surecom SF20 because somebody's bound to say that it's a horrible meter or whatever, but they're about the same. So here's what I want to show you real quick. One. Channel one. About three watts on a Legally, two watts is the max for uh, MERS, according to the FCC. And this was an FCC-approved radio, so I don't know how that happened. But uh, anyway, here we are on channel 5, about 3.2 watts. Keep in mind, that was pretty consistent throughout all five channels or frequencies, and I just wanted to make you aware that now you see the power levels. Let's go ahead and go through here real quick, and let's just get an idea of the frequencies and see if this thing is actually on frequency. So we're going to start again with channel 1. I tested the standing wave ratio or SWR of these antennas. And if, if, if it's your first time with radios, let me explain this here real quick. Typically you have power that goes out of an antenna from where the radio would be. If you have a low SWR, like for example, 1.0 to one or one to one, all or most of the power is going to go out the antenna and into the world. And it's going to really help you uh, as far as performance of, of your radio, get out to another radio and talk. As you increase that number two to one, three to one, four to one, not only do you lose performance that goes out to the world, but you also have reflective power that goes back into the radio. So you're keying up and some of the power is going back into the radio and it could damage the radio, especially if it's too high. When I tested these antennas, I had two of them in a area with no electronics uh, so forth, I was getting a 8.1 to one SWR on the MERS frequencies. And so that that's kind of poor, but I did test these also on the two meter band and they're somewhere around 2.2 to one SWR for, for these antennas. I want you to keep that in mind because again, it could affect the performance, but it could also damage your radio. And I'll run some tests here throughout the day to see if I do any significant damage or if I can somehow find a way to fix these without buying another antenna. I'm sure curious minds are wondering, what did I use to test the standing wave ratio? And I used an antenna analyzer or a graphical impedance analyzer. This is the MFJ226. Next up, I want to take the opportunity to show you how the programming software works in case you need to use it because it could be a little tricky. Let me go ahead and show you. Here we are, I downloaded the RT47 five channel software from Redivis's website, and we're just gonna go ahead and install it. Before we actually start up the programming software though, we need to plug in the programming cable. And to do that, we're gonna take this end of the programming cable. As you can see, there's three pins on there, and we're gonna put it into the radio. And now on the side of the radio where these contacts are, you're gonna put this in at an angle. It's gonna go up and in. And you're going to hold this end in and you're going to screw that little screw in. And then you're going to take your USB, which you see there, and you're going to plug it into your computer. Let's go ahead now and open up the software. Now, if you can't find the software on your desktop, you could search Windows by hitting the window on the lower left hand side of the screen and typing RT47. This is the RT47 software. And if you're into MERS and you're doing everything for MERS, there's not too much you need to really worry about. Actually, everything in here is pretty basic. If you take a look at the user manual, the user manual actually shows you what each of these things does. Um, but I will tell you that the read button is right here. The write button is right here. Additionally, you can go to program, read, or write. You can go to communication port under setting, and you can see I only have one to select, but you might have multiple. And if you have multiple, you might need to play around until you find the right one. So anyway, if I read the radio and I click okay, 
you'll see it reads the radio and at a hundred percent, it doesn't really always get to a hundred percent, sometimes 99%. But at this point, you'll hear your radio say, turn on the radio and uh, you have to click cancel. If you click okay, it'll read the radio again. So now it shows us all of our settings here. All the settings that you see here that can be changed are mentioned in the user manual, which is a decent user manual. So maybe check that out. You could change the side keys if you hold it long instead of it breaking the squelch or locking it. You could change it to scan so it scans all five channels. And you could put it in a battery saver mode or turn it out of battery saver mode. Again, this is just a very quick overview of the software because in the next episode, I'm going to go into way more detail. And I'm even going to show amateur radio operators how they could modify this radio to work on the amateur radio bands provided it's a clean signal, which I'll show you there too. So that's the software. And if you did make any changes, for example, let's say we set this to high power or we set this to encoding, whatever we choose to set, we could then go to the right button right here. Again, it's the red arrow and click OK. Now it'll write the radio. And again, it won't exit out or anything. So we just have to click cancel right here. I would recommend not turning off the voice enunciation. And the reason is, is if you turn it off, you don't know what channel you're on. You go up, go down on the channels, but it doesn't indicate channel one, channel two, channel three. Could be very kind of confusing and, and heartaching. And then if you go to change it back later, so you plug in your radio and you go to program it again, and you select English and you program it, there's a bug in the software. It's pretty cheap software, but your radio will then be in Chinese. I hope you join me in the next episode where I actually talk a little further about this radio. More specifically, next episode, I am going to do the water submersion and I am going to hook this up to a spectrum analyzer as well as test the battery. But uh, most importantly, I'm going to hack this radio and the radio is going to be hacked so it works on the two meter band for amateur radio operators. And we're going to see if I could actually get it to work on 1.25 meters as well as 70 centimeters. And the key is there that it has to be a clean signal. Uh, there's probably not filtering on this radio for 1.25 meters or 70 centimeters, but as a licensed amateur radio operator, we have the, the license to test things. So why not test it? Anyway, I hope you did enjoy this episode, a quick brief overview of a MERS radio that eventually we're going to hack to work on two meters. I'm Ham Radio Dude. Thanks for checking out the channel 73.